Hey guys, it's Phil with the Minuteman Moment, and today I'm talking about our least favorite subject that we can't seem to stop talking about, and that's gun registries. Gun owners talk about how gun control is bad because we hate waiting periods and regulations that don't make any sense. But we don't spend as much time really thinking about how gun control leads to some of the worst regimes and genocides in world history. We really need to explain to our friends and family who may not feel as passionate about the Second Amendment that the gun laws they feel sympathetic towards are the same ones which were put in place by the worst regimes in history. Most people who don't think about gun culture may think that a gun registry is pretty benign. After all, what are these gun owners trying to hide? But it's our job as activists to help them rethink the issue by asking, why does the government have the right to know how well I can resist them? Way back in 1918 Russia, one of the first things Lenin did was create a gun registry for people who already own guns. Not a gun confiscation, but a system to do so later. According to the All-Russian Central Executive Committee on the Certificate of the Right to Carry and Keep Firearms, the certificates authorizing the carrying and keeping of firearms issued by the All-Russian Central Executive Committee are valid throughout the territory of the Russian Socialist Federative Re Soviet Republic. All certificates issued by the All-Russian Central Executive Committee must be serially numbered, be provided with the signatures of the Chairman and the Secretary of the All-Russian Central Executive Committee, and must carry the seal of the All-Russian Central Executive Committee. There's also the use of a registry being used by Nazi Germany. In 1938, a year before the invasion of Poland, the Nazis passed a law requiring all sellers of firearms to keep a firearm dealer's book, which kept records of their transactions for the year. Gun dealers were required to deliver the book to the police at the end of the year. According to Nazi legal code, the business owner is required to keep the book until 10 years have elapsed after the date of the last entry. If the business owner ceases to do business, he must turn over the book he has maintained to the local police authority for safekeeping. Huh, that sounds almost identical to the ATF's registry of nearly a billion firearm records from out-of-business dealers who were required by law to turn them over. What's even more chilling about Nazi gun laws is their absolute prohibition on Jews owning any firearms. This was put into effect shortly after Kristallnacht. Since they knew who owned firearms, the Gestapo made short work. Sometimes it's not always about the current regime which institutes these registries. In the case of Uganda, the British started a registry in the 1950s, but after Uganda gained independence, they kept that registry in their legal code. Once General Idi Amin came to power, it's estimated nearly 300,000 civilians were killed. It may take years for a gun registry to translate into state violence, but the risk is always present. And in Guatemala, the first law calling for a gun registry was in 1871. Nearly a hundred years later, during the Guatemala Civil War, thousands of Mayans were exterminated in what is known as the Silent Holocaust. Okay, so I've thrown a lot of facts and figures at you, so let me close with one final example of gun confiscation. During World War I, the Ottoman Empire sought to exterminate their Christian population, the largest of which being the Armenians. One eyewitness account explains exactly how it went down in his village. Every man, having buried his weapon underground, was looking for a way of denial. Some who saw their rescue and betrayal began to slander this or that one. In the name of the government, a notice was displayed in all areas demanding that every man surrender his weapon in person. Otherwise, they would be condemned to death. Thus, in accordance with the announcement, all weapons, even hunting guns, were surrendered to the government. Yet, the matter was not resolved that way. There were repeated beatings and torture with demands for new weapons. Virtually every Armenian in that village was later forced to go on a death march through the desert. Gun registries, gun registrations, serial numbers never seem like a big deal at first, but it becomes clear that they are a big deal when it's too late. Don't let history repeat itself and take action, even something small. Members of Congress are sent to Washington to represent us. Hit the link below and tell your lawmakers to support Michael Cloud's No Registry Rights Act to get rid of America's current gun registry. Thanks for watching. That's it for today. I'll see you next time.